Everybody say amen. Amen. Maybe see it. God is in this place. Amen. He is in this holy temple that all be slain. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. It's good to be among God's people. Amen. The family of God, the saints of God. Those who have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. We thank God for watching over us this past week, keeping us in his care, protecting us from all good harm and danger. So we all should be able to lift up praises up to him, showing that we appreciate the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. We want to keep our minister, our preacher, as well as our elder in our prayers. Brother Barry, and plus his lovely wife. And those who are traveling, we want to always pray for those who are traveling on the road because there are a lot of danger out there. And we want God to continue to protect and be with those who are traveling. I don't know about y'all, but I see a lot of empty seats. We got to do better. We just had a great gospel meeting this past week. We ought to be on fire, church. There should be no need for us to be laid back. Last day, last day to go. You know, and uh, and like God hasn't been good to us. You know, God expect more. God expect the best promises. You heard three great sermons last week. Amen. And those sermons should have motivated us to want to serve our God, our Father, even more. I would like to, before I go into my lesson, there's a song on my heart I would like to sing. Uh, you have your hymns book. Uh, Page number 368, all to Jesus, Amen. I surrender. Yes, sir. 368, I love this song. Amen. You just think about the words of the song, it's, it's very rich. It has a lot of meaning. Let's begin. All to Jesus, I
all to us. So we should be willing to surrender all to him. Amen. If you have in your possession the Bible, the word of God, as Brother Barry was saying, hold up those Bibles. <laughs> you don't? Just say, Lord, help me. <laughs> so good to see all of the Bibles. Good to see each and every one of you here today. We will be studying from the Old Testament, from the book of Jeremiah. And the chapter is 18. So when you go there with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, we will commence at verse number 1. And we will read all the way down to verse number 6. The Bible says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house. And behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. In the vessel, that he made a clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you? As this potter, said the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. <coughs> the Bible will let us know that, according to Romans 15, and verse number 4, what sort of things were written before time were written for our learning? That we, through patient and comfort of the scripture, might have hope. So even though we are reading from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. we can learn something from it. Amen. 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 Even though that we may be studying from the Old Testament, we can learn something from it. Yeah. And I would just like to use for a subject today, the potter wants to put you back together again. The potter wants to put you back together again. <laughs> Just think about the potter. That means that if he wants to put us back together again, that means somebody has gone astray. Someone has fallen by the wayside. Someone has corrupted themselves. Someone has crumbled. Someone has messed up. And so we need the power today. And because of sin running rapid, Throughout our world and throughout our city and throughout our streets and throughout our country, we certainly need the potter. Am I right, brother? You see, sin is powerful. Sin is deadly. Sin will mess us up. And that's why we need the potter. Right. Somebody may say, well, what is sin? Sin is rebellion against God. Right. You know, we need more people who want to hear the word of God and stay with the word of God and keep the word of God as well as obey the word of God. 
We need more of those kind of people in our world. Am I right about it? You see, when Adam and Eve ate off the tree that was in the midst of the garden, uh, that the Lord God commanded them not to eat, their disobedience resulted in the introduction of sin into the human race. And that's why we need God. We need the power to put us back together again. And you see, sin is a transgression against God's law. If you go with me to the book of 1 John, you want to look at something here. 1 John chapter uh, 3. And I like Brother Smith, if you don't mind getting you a, a mic, because I like to read the word of God out loud. Uh, a mic uh, so we can study the scripture here this morning. Anybody else would like to join in and help me out in teaching and preaching this lesson? Uh, here in the book of John, chapter 3, let's begin with verse number 4. The Bible says, verse John, chapter 3, and verse number 4. It says, Whosoever committed sin, do what? Also committed. Transgressed. Verse, verse John, chapter 3, and verse number 4. Whosoever commits sin, whosoever commits sin, transgresses against the law, also, also the law. For the transgression of the law, uh -huh. and ye know okay. that he was manifested to make to take away our sin. So you see, the Bible says that when you uh, sin, you transgress God's law. Right. And now the Bible says we know that Christ came to do what? Take away our sin. Right. Amen. And that's the reason why the world is so messed up in, in chaotic situation. is because sin uh, is getting the best of us. You see, man calls sin an accident. God calls it an abomination. Man calls sin a blunder. God calls it blindness. Man calls sin chance. God calls it a choice. Man calls sin a, a, a defeat. I mean, a, a, a defect. Uh, God calls it a disease. Man calls sin an error. God calls it an enmity. Man calls sin fascination. God calls it vitality. Man calls sin in, uh, 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 in, in, in infirmity. God calls it iniquity. Man calls sin luxury. God calls it lawlessness. Man calls sin a mistake. God calls it madness. Man calls sin trifle. God calls it a tragedy. Man calls sin weakness. God calls it willingness. You see, sin has darkened the understanding. Sin has deafened the spiritual sense. Sin has crippled the memory. Sin has impaired the mind. Sin has marred the spirit. Sin has robbed the soul. Sin has weakened the body. Sin has corrupted the mind and caused us to have evil thoughts and yes. wicked thoughts uh, and thoughts that does not mount up to anything. So that's the reason why we have to stay with God. And that's the reason why we have to have the power of touch. And I'm not talking about T.D. Jakes. I'm not talking about the place where they worship, the power house. You see, God is the power. And God wants all of us to come into his house. The place where every nation ought to be willing to worship him. Yes. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 
shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations the Bible said all nations shall flow in shall flow in it doesn't matter who you are it doesn't matter what your skin look like because you see when it comes to sin it's not your skin that my right up out of it. It's the sin. Yes, sir. That's the reason why God has a house that He wants all the people to come in. I'm just laying this foundation about the powder house. The Bible says it shall be established on the top of the mountain. Yes, sir. It shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations shall fall into it. Read. And many people shall go. And many people shall go and say, go and say come, ye, come ye, let us go up and see the mountain of the Lord. If we are the true church of Christ, if we are the true people of God, if we are God's house, we ought to be the one that say, come, let us go. Right. Uh, I'm not right about it. Yes, sir. Nobody ought to be motivating us. We should be self-motivated. Right. I'm not right about it. We should be self-motivated. We should be self we ought to be so glad, yes, that we are going to the house of God. And when you are not motivated, how can you motivate somebody else? If you are not excited, how are you going to get somebody else excited? If you got caught up in the spirit, how are you going to get somebody else to be caught up in the spirit of God? That's what's wrong with the church. That's why we have so many empty pews. Yes. This is the west side of Dallas. Yes, oh yeah, I heard about the west side. I grew up on the west side of Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> All the crime uh, going on. I was talking to a guy. I went to Taiwan and uh, he was uh, getting out of services. He, we was talking. I was inviting him to church, giving the opportunity to have uh, to talk to him about Jesus. So I'm sitting in this house, his apartment, and I, I let him know where I attend church. And I says, in West Dallas. He said, oh, I grew up in West Dallas. <laughs> then he started talking about the hood, how bad it is in West Dallas. <laughs> yeah. But you see, God can use a church in spite of how bad it is in West Dallas. We just got to get busy. I said, we have to get busy. Jesus said, I must be about who? My father's business. Amen. If you're not about the father's business, then you're about somebody else's business. We have to get busy for the Lord instead of being busy bodies. Amen. Amen, brother. Got too many busy bodies in the church. I know how to keep the busy bodies out of my business. I don't know about you, but I do. Yeah. I just lay the word of God on yeah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey, right. right. see, Jesus, he knew how to keep the devil out of his business, right? Yes, sir. He said, it is written. Yes, sir. There is power in the written word. Yes, sir. That's why you have to hold on to it. The devil will run from the word of God. But the Bible said, many shall say, let us go up. To the house. To the house. Go this is going up. When you in Christ, you ought to be going up, not going down. You ought to be moving on up. Like that, that show that just come on, right? Moving on up. Yeah, you moving on up in your career. You moving on up in your business. You moving on up uh, uh, in in the different activities of the world. But you ought to be moving on up in the Lord. All that stuff gonna fade away. John said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world is the lust of the eye, and the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. He said, These things are not of the Father, but it's of the world. He said, These things are going to pass away, but they that do it the will of God shall abide forever. So that's what we have to do. We have to do the will of God. 
And when we do the will of God, I guarantee you, you will not have all these empty pews. I guarantee you that. Because the word of God is still powerful. We have to believe it. And we have to put it in here. And when you put it in here in your heart and in your mind, you ought to speak it out with your mouth. You know, it's not time to be quiet for the Lord. It's just time to be speaking up. All this stuff that's going on in the world, same sex marriages and all this other crazy stuff. We got a bunch of potheads. Hey, I saw them in the church here today. You see, Satan knows what he's doing in the world. He's doing all of that so he can corrupt the world. Let's continue to read some more, brother. I forgot about this scripture. To the house of God of the God of Jacob. To the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his way. That's what the Bible said. And he, God, will teach us of his way. That's why we ought to come to God's house. If you want to know how to live, you ought to come to God's house. If you want to know how to walk right, you need to come to God's house. If you want to know how to talk right, you need to come to God's house. Because he will teach us of his ways, and we will do what? Walk and, and we will in walk in his path. His path. The Bible says what? For out of life shall go forth the law, and, and the, the word, word of the law of the Lord is from Jerusalem. So you see the church had its beginning in the city of Jerusalem. Thank God for the church. Thank God for the house of God. It was Jesus that said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 18, I say also to thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I know we got some school teachers here. Yes, we got some uh, proud English teachers here. You see, mine is a predominant adjective. We're showing the possessive case of who it belongs to. Yes. When I'm talking yes. about my, when Jesus says my church, he's not talking about anybody else's church. He was talking about, Lord help me, the Baptist church. He's not talking about the Catholic church. Because you cannot read that in the Bible. I will give you a thousand dollars if you show me the Baptist church in the Bible, I will give you a thousand dollars if you show me the Methodist church in the Bible. I will give you a thousand dollars if you show me the Presbyterian church in the Bible. It's not in the Bible, but I can show you the Lord's church, the church of Christ. Romans 6 in the city, the Bible says, salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. I don't know about you, but I'm going to stay with the Lord. I'm going to stay with the house of God. I'm going to stay with the potter because I know that the potter has everything that I need. So let me go back to my church. Y'all got me fired up already. Yes, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord and said, Arise and go down to the potter's house. You see, that's what we need to learn how to do. We need to stop just sitting down, looking all around, looking at everybody else. We ought to arise and go to the potter's house. There are so many folks who are still at home or, or they're out doing their own business. It's not a time to go grocery shopping yes, on the Lord's Day. Amen. It's not time to go clothes shopping on the Lord's yes, Day. Sir. It's not time to go and wash your no car, no young men, yes, and get you idolized on the Lord's Day. It's not time to look at all those beautiful wheels that you put on a old yes, run down beat. Trouble. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, take one food and mess up that car. Uh, I 
remember years ago when I was in Chicago, I had to go to a, a wrecking place to get a part for my car. And on the counter was a sign. And it said something about it takes 3,000 some nuts to put a car together. That's N U T S, nuts. And then it says they only take one nut to wreck it. <laughs> He's going to try to make a quick left while I'm coming through the green light. And we collide. <laughs> Mess up my car. I need a nice car. <laughs> my first car. And you know, thank God it wasn't uh, as bad as it was because if I would, if I, we could have collided head on. So I kind of squirted it off and missed him. I mean, where well, he hit me, you know. But anyway, I almost ran into a pole trying to miss him. You know? And uh, messed my car up, and I was real upset. You know, every now and then that hood would come out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? The guy was trying to run. He, 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 you know what? My door was messed up. I had to like push it hard and try to get out. And he trying to run through the alley. I caught up with him. I said, what did you do for And you know what? He was drunk. Drunk early in the morning. Seven some o'clock in the morning. Then you know what else? He didn't have any license. No insurance. This is what's going on in the world. That's why we ought to thank God for his blessings. You could have been in an accident last week. Just like somebody was in an accident. You ought to thank God that you are here. Yeah. You ought to be willing to lift up your voice and praise God for His blessings. Nobody ought to be making you sing. Yes. Yeah. Some you should not be having to always tell you, let's sing. Yeah. Can we all sing together? You, you ought to want to come to this place and sing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Pray. Sing it ought to be on your mind. Uh -huh. Praying ought to be on your mind. Yes, you need to come into this place. Yeah. Praise the God should be on your mind even before you come into this place. Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't know what kind of preacher y'all thought I was. <laughs> I know y'all, y'all be looking at me, I'll be checking you out. <laughs> checking me out, I'm checking you out too. <laughs> so the Bible says, now let's go to verse number two of Jeremiah chapter 18. He said, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will call thee to hear my word. Well. Church, don't ever forget it's important to hear the word of God. Yes. It's, it's the word of God that lifts mm -hmm. us up. It's the word of God that builds us up. Amen. It's the word of God that fortifies our souls. It's the word of God that will keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Yeah. I taught my children at a young age. To ask the Lord to protect you from all hurt, harm, and danger. Right. Yeah. You know how bad some of these places are. Some of these communities are. But it is God that keeps us Amen. from all hurt, harm, and danger. So we need the word of God. That's why we ought to come to the powers and come to his house. Then the Bible says, verse 3. Then I went down to the father's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel, verse number four, that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. God is saying to us, I got you in my hand. All you have to do is just let me work with you. Some of us, we are just so so hard and thick headed. And that's the reason why God cannot work with us. Uh -huh. That's why God cannot 
mold us the way he wants to mold us. That's why he can't equip us the way he wants to equip us. The Bible says a double-minded person or man is unstable in all of his ways. Double-minded. You don't know what you want. Sometimes you want the Lord and sometimes you want no. Sometimes you want to serve them and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you want to give them and sometimes you don't. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes people get upset with leadership and they don't want to give because they upset the leadership. But why do you want to block out your blessings because you upset with somebody? Take the man out of the picture and put the man in the picture, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What did he do to you? <laughs> so God, he wants to mold us. He wants to get the anger out of our hearts. You see, so many people have anger. You know, anger will get you in trouble. Anger will put you in prison. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how to control it. Mm -hmm. Because it will make you do crazy and stupid things. The Bible wants to put us back together again. He wants to put us back again from all of the things that are going on in our lives. Not only the anger, but he also wants us to Put away the bitterness. The bitterness. Amen. Some of us, we are so bitter. Something that happened 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, you still haven't gotten over. That's why Jesus said you ought to be like the little child. And humble yourself as the little child. And be converted. You see, all of us have been offended in some kind of way. And you know what? All of us have offended somebody in some kind of way. Yes. You, are, you can't be a dog and never offended nobody. Hey, Amen. And even Jesus said, all offenses will come. But we have to make sure that we are not purposely offending anybody. You see, there's a difference when we accidentally do something, then we purposely do something. Because I can accidentally step on your foot. Because I didn't know you was there. You know, my back can be turned, I can turn, and just accidentally step on your foot. It's not that I purposely wanted to do it, but it was an accident. You see what I'm saying? The potter wants to put us back together again from our covetousness. We covet too much. Remember the song, Don't Let the Joneses Get You Down? Joneses have got a lot of us down. The Joneses have got a lot of us bankrupt. The Joneses have got a lot of us in trouble. And the Joneses have got a lot of folks in prison. We can we got we can't look at that. We have to look at the Lord. The Lord is our example. Yes. That we should follow him. Not the Joneses. Not the Kardashians. <laughs> hey Amen. Got all this crazy stuff on the television. I mean there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. And you know, my sister. How do you think a man is going to respect you if you go around calling each other that B word? Huh? You go around talking about you the baddest boy. How bad can you be? Just think about it. How bad? I'm the baddest boy. I'm just glamorizing. To be the best, the worst. But there's nothing messy about that. And you know, we got all that stuff capture our minds. That's what I'm saying. That's why the pattern has to put us back together again. Now, this, you know, another scripture came up 
in my mind, but it's important to use the scripture. So I want to go to Romans chapter 12. And let's look at verse number 2. Say some time. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2. And be not conformed. The Bible said, and be not conformed to this world. To this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing by the renewing of your mind. Of your mind. You see, then, God wants us not to be conformed to this world. Yep. That's why worldliness is creeping in the church. And I got a word for some of these preachers out there who was in the church of Christ. Who is causing division and causing conflict, conflict among the people of God. We have to understand Satan is powerful. Yes, but God is all powerful. Yes, I heard it through the grapevine that there are other churches of Christ that are popping up. And they are speaking away from the church of Christ. Right. But I want to forewarn you, don't get caught up in all of that drama and all of that mess and all of that confusion. Because the Bible said, God is not the author of confusion. But of peace in all of the churches of the saints. You find that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 about Verse number 33. You may be confused, but God is not confused. The Bible said, forever the Lord word is settled in heaven. So who are you to come and try to settle things in unscripturally? You got too many scholars in the church. <laughs> You got a little knowledge? Look out. So my preacher told me years ago, a little knowledge is dangerous. <laughs> because you can do much harm with that little knowledge that you got. Uh, then you can do good. So we have to understand that Jesus is the head of the church. Yeah. And it is Jesus that has all authority. Yep. He has authority over the evangelists. Yep. He has authority over the bishop, the pastors, the elders yep. who are the same. He has all authority over the deacons. And guess what? He has all authority over the body of the church. Amen. And that's who we owe our allegiance to. That is to Jesus. Yep. What do Jesus have to say about it? I'm not caught up in what you have to say. <laughs> because your words don't mean anything. Don't give me script. I mean, don't give me nip. Give me script. <laughs> a lot of folks didn't like a run off at the mouth. That's what all these shows are about. Just run off at the mouth. They ain't saying anything that is profitable. They ain't saying anything that's going to help somebody. What they are doing, they are using word to destroy people. And that's the enemy of the devil. That's the spirit of the devil. Because he want to kill, steal, and to destroy. Yes. I didn't know where the Lord was going to lead me with this son. But I asked him to use me today. I was up late into the morning. <laughs> but I'm glad he used me. Amen. A lot of times it's not what you write down. It's what the Lord wants you to say. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says, going back to the Bible, uh, you have some more on that scripture. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. That you do what? You stick at it? That you may prove. That you may prove. What is that good? What is that good? And acceptable. And acceptable. And perfect will. And perfect will. Of God. Of God. You see, God wants to prove it. Yes, sir. It's, it's about being acceptable to God. Yes, sir. It's not trying to prove me or to prove something to your elder. Amen. Amen. Or to prove something to someone else. It's, it's about being approved in God's sight. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A work for that needs not to be ashamed. Yes, right. right. Yes, sir. Having the right, the word of truth. 
Amen. Amen. Somebody say, well, I'm not fussing church. I'm just trying to teach. I'm just trying to help the church. I'm trying to speak in the spirit of love. Because if you know where the church is going, the way I see it's going, there's some trouble. And you know, God is going to forewarn us before all of this stuff yes, sir. gets so far out of hand. Yes, caution. That's right. Yes, He's pre cautious. Yes, yeah. So, he wants to, want to make us, he wants to mold us, he wants to shape us. And that's why in verse 4, the Bible says in Jeremiah 18 4, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. You see, it has to be about God. God knows what's best for us. Amen. That job you didn't even get, God knows what's best for you. Yes. That car that you wanted, God knows what's best for you. Yes. That how that you thought you need, God knows what's best for you. That promotion that you really thought you deserved, God knows what best for you. Now, don't get it twisted out. God wants us to have the best things in life. Amen. There's nothing wrong with excelling. There's nothing wrong with trying to do better. There's nothing wrong with having things, but don't allow those things to have you. Amen. Don't let those things corrupt you. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says in verse number five, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can not I do with you as this part? That's the question I was quoting right now. God is saying, can I not do with you as I can shape this clay? As I can fashion this clay? As I can mold this clay and make it what I want to make it? God wants to do some special things with us and for us. When I was working with the church at Marcellus, we had a lot of talented, gifted, gifted people there. And we got a lot of talented, gifted people here. Yes. At the Dallas West Church of Christ. But let me share something with you. The more gifted the church is, the more that God expects. Amen. God blesses, don't bless the church with gifts. And we don't use our gifts right. to his honor and glory. So we have to do that in church. You see, finding God is very important. Because when you find God, you find yourself. If God be in you, he is more than those who is against you. How awesome it is to know that God is looking down from his lofty throne and he knows your name. <laughs> he knows your name. He knows my name. He knows all of my names. Yeah. All together. And just imagine when we all pray. At one time, God hears all of our prayers at the same time. Yeah. You know, if all of y'all were speaking at the same time, I couldn't get everything all of y'all saying, but God can. Yeah. That's how awesome he is. Awesome. Isn't he awesome? Yes, sir. You see, he sees your struggles and your pain. He hears every prayer and longing of your heart. He sees each tears that falls. You are just a tiny dot in the landscape on planet Earth. You have a maker and a redeemer. You have work. Uh, you are loved. Uh, not only does he know you, he has a purpose for your life. Yeah. He calls you his own. He never leaves you. When your life displays the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, uh, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, self you show to whom you belong. Thus, how you live bring your Father great pleasure. Live each day seeking to know God, because he has a plan for your life. Right here, right now. Yes. Much in store for your life. When you pray daily for his guidance, the Holy Spirit will lead you. The Old Testament prophet Jeremiah encourages God's people by 
telling them God promised. Listen to his promise. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. You see, God wants to prosper us and not harm us. Amen. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's in Jeremiah 29 11. Listening to your prayers and answering them when you call on them. He is there lending his strength. He is there providing a place of refuge for the stormy day. Praise him for he is there. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is the one that is there. He is there when your loved ones go away. He is there when fear comes your way. He is there when trouble knock on your door. God will always be there. Jesus said, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. And the Bible tells me the word of God is why I love to come to the word of God. And when I come to the word of God, I want to be taught the truth from the word of God. And when I open the pages of inspiration, I read in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 31, the Bible said, for God is God before us. Who can be against us? Isn't it all right? When I open the word of God, I read in the inspiration book that the Bible said all scripture are profitable. Now I read about it. All scripture are inspired by God. That means that God breathed out his word to us. And when God breathes something out, you better believe it's going to be the best thing that had ever happened. Because when God formed men from the dust of the ground, the Bible said he breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man, a living soul, all God had to do is just breathe life in you. All he had to do is just breathe strength in you. All he had to do is breathe joy in you. When sorrow leave you, all you have to do is breathe uh, 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 encouragement to you uh, when you are doubting, when you don't know where to turn or where to go or who to talk to. Uh, you can always uh, call on the Lord. Uh, that's why I love the Son. Uh, call on him up uh, and let Jesus do it. Uh, he will fix it for you. Uh, call him up. Uh, he will lend you a hand. Uh, Jesus is there. He is always there. When you're there lonely in your house all by yourself, He is there. All you have to do is just think about the Word of God. If you can't think about it, just open up the Word and just read about the Word of God. The Bible says He will not leave you nor will He forsake you. The Bible says that the greatest is He that is in you than He that is in the world, the Bible said, uh, He gives strength uh, to the youth. Uh, he will strengthen you. Uh, the Bible said, Wait on the Lord, uh, and you shall renew your strength. I uh, know sometimes uh, this old age will get you down. Uh, old author writers, uh, I call it old author, it will knock you down. Uh, you know, even now, you know. Uh, if I've been down too long, I've been with pain in my back. Uh, yes, uh, and then I've got to let it stretch out. Uh, yes, because you see, all of us are getting there. Uh, thank God for all of the older members here. Uh, they got a lot of wisdom. Uh, and you know what? Every night and then I ask them, what y'all been eating? Yes. <laughs> I want to live long too. Yes. But I want to live long with good health. Yes. Yes. I want to be sick all my life. You know, uh, but we know sickness is going to come, right? We know it's going to come. I thank God for Sister Freeman. She invited me over a couple weeks ago. I mean, if we ate, if we ate. I ate so much, you know what, that night, I didn't eat anything else. <laughs> you know, I thank her. 
We had some great fellowship. We had some other members that was there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just beautiful. I mean, we got Christians that have a good heart and good spirit. I, I just love to be around. Good hearted people of God. Amen. Because we out there in the world, and you, you're on your job, and you're out there with a bunch of sinners, and they don't care about you. They're trying to get your position. <laughs> Amen. And the guy just told me the other day, he's a supervisor, his manager all upset because he's doing bad on the job. Wow, what? Be a hater. I said, don't be a hater, be a congratulator. <laughs> you know? Got too many haters in the world. All right. You know what? We even got some in the church. I can't make you love me, but I love you. I love everyone here. I may not even know you, but I still love you. Because I want the love of God to be in you. And I want to manifest that. Some folks, hey, hey, hey folks, they don't even really know. <laughs> Look at you. I don't know who you think he is. <laughs> Look out. Yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to be who God wants me to be. That's all. No more, no less. So who do you think you are? <laughs> it's the <a> question. <laughs> if you're here, you heard the word. You have to believe it all in your heart. You have to be willing to repent of your sin. Repentance is to turn from your way. Turn to the potter's way. Yeah. It is God that is molding us. All the trials and tribulations we go through is because God is molding us. He is fitting us into His will. Mm -hmm. Just think about it. We didn't go through what we go through, went through. How strong would we be today? We wouldn't be as strong. You know? We go through stuff that, will, that should make us strong. And just keep in mind the word said God would not put on us more than He can bear. So when I think about the scripture, it doesn't matter what comes in my life. I know God is for me because he's not going to put on me more than I can. Because I know that he's going to give me the strength to bear it. So after you repent, you must be willing to confess with your mind that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you have to be baptized in the watery grave of baptism. And that's when God performs a surgery on you. God will cut off the sin in your life. According to Colossians 2 and 12, you have to be buried with him in baptism. And then when you are buried with him in baptism, you will walk, get up on that grave and walk in the newness of life. Yeah. God said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Why don't you make that your life today? Don't refuse to listen to God. You're in the right place at the right time. God knew you was going to be here, and God purposed for you to be here. This is your time to give your life to Jesus. Do it right now, and together stand. Come to Jesus.